Okay, good morning. We're called this morning's meeting to order. The first thing is the approval of the agenda. Just a reminder that number three will be removed from the agenda. I'll offer a motion to approve the agenda with the change. Second. Okay, we approve motion by Commissioner Mocho, second by Commissioner Evinger to approve the agenda with the change. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, in the agenda, or the, we did have a, a thousand dollar donation. I want to recognize um, the awesome foundation of Cass and Clay County. They made a thousand dollar check to the West Central Regional Juvenile Center for educational material. I want to thank them for their very nice donation for that. Okay, citizens to be heard. Doesn't look like we got anybody in the audience. Uh, got anybody? We have nothing, Mr. Chair. Okay. Approval of the payment of bills and vouchers. A move approval, Mr. Chairman. A second. A motion by Commissioner Campbell, second by Commissioner Kravinov. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of January the 10th. So move. And a motion by Commissioner Campbell. Second. Second by Commissioner Edmund to approve the minutes from January 10th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, we'll move on to item number two, permission to hire a vacant overnight juvenile worker position in the Secure program. Mr. O'Donnell. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board. I'm here today to request uh, permission to rehire a vacant position I have in the secure position in our overnight, one of our overnight counselor positions. I also request any backfill if it's filled internally. Okay. Is, you say it was in the maintenance position or? Our overnight position. Oh, overnight position. Excuse me. Thank you. Any question on that or? Dave. Yeah, James, uh, how many openings have we got right now? Um, we have three full-time openings. Um, this is the this is one of the three. Um, one of them is just being offered that got approved a couple weeks ago. But our our variable hour, uh, we have over thirty. It would be part-time. Okay. I move uh, for approval of this request. Second. We got a motion by Commissioner Edmunder, second by Commissioner Campbell, to approve the request for overnight juvenile work position. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion granted. Thank you. With that, we'll go on to number four: proof of resolution 2023-05 for the merit system withdrawal certification. In replacement of resolution 2022-42. Darren will take that one, I guess. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Um, this is uh, a little bit of redundancy because if you recall back in, I think it was December, we um, you, uh, approved a resolution to get out of the merit system. Um, and since that time, on January 10th, the Commissioner of uh, the Department of Human Services granted our certification. So we were officially out of, uh, out of the merit system at that point. But when I sent in the resolution that was signed in December, they said that it had to include a line in there about the um, Personnel Appeals Board, which is a little bit redundant because once you um, uh, get approval and certification that you will adhere to Minnesota statute um, 35, uh, 300, 375.56. That includes the personnel appeals board piece of it. So what this resolution is doing is just replacing the resolution that was done in December. Um, that replacement was 2022-42. Uh, and this resolution includes the language of establishing a personnel appeals board. 
So I uh, would request approval for this resolution 2023-05 to replace resolution uh, 2022-42. Dash 42? Uh, yes, I think that's the case. Th this resolution that I'm asking to be approved is resolution 2023-05. Right. Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, this is something that that I think uh, has been in the works for actually a number of years and then it got right. laid, uh, put on the back burner for a while, but it, I think this is something that uh, will be beneficial to all of our department heads moving forward too with the whole hiring process and with, with you guys. So it's, uh, mm -hmm. this is the right thing to do. I would move that we, uh, uh, I'd move resolution 2023-05 uh, to replace uh, previous resolution 2022-42. Okay, we've got a motion by Commissioner Campbell. Second. Uh, second by Commissioner Ebinger to approve resolution 2023-05 to replace 2022-42. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Next thing, I think we have to wait till 9 o'clock for that. So we'll skip to number 6, energy legislation to impact waste management. Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe I can take okay. this one. Um, last week, uh, we did a an agenda addition to talk about legislation that was currently going through the House and Senate. It was, uh, I believe it was House File 7 and Senate File 4 at the time, and, and we expressed some concerns about language in there as it would pertain to the um, Prairie Lake Solid Waste Facility, which we are a member and part owner. And uh, a lot of that things have moved quite rapidly. Uh, on the House File 7, they did hold a hearing, I believe it was last Wednesday, and I believe Commissioner Mojo was online listening to that, as well as I and Steve, and I don't know if anybody, any others were able to listen in on that. And uh, what Chris McCann, who was our director at uh, Prairie Lakes, uh, did testify regarding concerns with that facility and some of the language uh, that had been in the original bill. Uh, and he, he, I think he did a really nice job expressing the concerns, how, how that energy bill was conflicting with MPCA and, and uh, in terms of um, pollution standards from solid waste. And uh, so, it's been a dialogue that's been going on. Um, I was able to reach out to Senator Kupek. I know I'd, I know he had reached out to Commissioner Ebinger, and and I was able to have about a 10-minute phone call with um, Senator Kupek, and he sent me some current language that's in the Senate bill, and under the Senate bill, and I did send this to. Um, our county attorney for review. Um, I'm waiting to hear back, but it, but under the uh, current Senate bill, the things that would be excluded would be solar, wind, hydroelectric, hydrogen, and biomass. And, uh, and the biomass uh, has a few line items included. And one of them says, uh, energy uh, an er energy recovery facility used to capture the heat value of mixed municipal waste or refuse derived from fuel from mixed municipal solid waste as a primary fuel. So, so Senator Kupek is, is quite certain that the Senate bill exempts us from, from the uh, energy language that we previously were worried we would fall under and cause us to close, basically. 
and the terms of that was in that AMC language, shuttered was the term that was used. Uh, so, and then, and then uh, he did, and so I asked him, I said, well, so when we got on and were listening to that House hearing, there was some discussion about an amendment on the House file. Obviously, we didn't get a chance to read fully what that amendment was about, but in, uh, I'll just read the sentence, two sentences that Senator Kupek uh, sent to me. He said, thanks for the call today. Below are the sections that deal with the energy recovery and carbon credits. I checked the House bill and they did include an amendment to exempt energy recovery facilities and that was in that House amendment. So he's, con you know, he seems confident there. Um, as I read these things, you know, sometimes it's, uh, some, you need a lawyer sometimes to, re to understand what these things say. You know, I think I know what it says, but I am not sure I know what it says type of a deal. But, uh, but anyway, so, so I think right now um, it's a little bit more comforting. And I, just to touch base, too, on the carbon credits, um, there is a deal in the works where certain entities will be able to sell carbon credits uh, as a revenue source for those who have to find uh, a means for um, not meeting the current and it's, I think it, it goes back to something like our um, uh, credits for our um, wetlands, wetland mitigation credits. You know, sometimes you have to be able to uh, use, find wetland mitigation credits to complete the project. So I'm, I'm assuming this is like that, and Senator Kupek actually felt that not only would we be exempt, but might, we might be eligible, we meaning Prairie Lakes, solid waste uh, might be eligible for carbon credits in the future, which would be a positive thing from a, from a revenue standpoint. And I asked him, well, geez, how many carbon credits can we sell? <laughs> <laughs> and his reply was he didn't know. But, but anyway, so uh, I know last week it was kind of, we added, added it on there, it was kind of, a, kind of a panic thing that we were dealing with because how fast things are moving right now in the in the house and senate chambers and we wanted to make sure but as of uh, as it stands right now uh, we're, i'm more com comfortable than i was a week ago in terms of of what's in this language and we'll have to continue to monitor it i know corey stays on top of it as well too and so we'll keep monitoring and if something in that area changes you know and <coughs> I don't know, Commissioner Mojo, did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I well, one, I think that this board can be really excited about the responses that we got from our uh, elected leadership. I had a phone call with Senator Kupek. I know that um, I also had a phone call with um, Representative Joy. I think Commissioner uh, Krabinoff had talked to Representative Keeler's office as well and, and Senator uh, Mark Johnson's office. And I think that, yes, we can be more... Um, optimistic about this specific bill going forward, but after pretty substantial conversation with Brian Martinson, who's our AMC Environment and Natural Resources Policy Committee analyst, there's still some, some pretty um, gaping um, concerns in this bill still as stands in regards to what it will do with the um, additional landfilling capacity that will need to happen if, if HERC and the cities closes that really does put um, some pressure on all of us and then to what will happen with the subsequent elimination of, of really 95 percent of what the market or what a business uh, market is um, you know here we are up in northwest minnesota yes we're a small player but still rely on this larger um and uh, you know entity um to help and then Furthermore, I think there's some pretty big concerns with with uh, pub other public smaller utilities. I mean, those small co-ops, there are some smaller co-ops in, in our area, and that doesn't necessarily address that. So yes, I agree we're, we're in a, a better spot that we, we were with those bills a, a week ago, but um, the reality is we're still producing carbon at that facility, and um, 
whether it's this week or in 2014 or 2040, which really isn't that far away, there will need to be some some pretty large changes in how we we operate. And um, granted, as we reiterated before, Clay County is um, invested in um, utilizing the resources to the best that we can while her, uh, you know, taking into account the environment. And, and just as we're, we're doing with Prairie Lakes, we're recycling, recycling and marketing a, a lot of material that reduces our need to landfill. And um, granted, it's, it's still a revolving um, door, but I think the need for us to continue to advocate and tell our story and tell the need uh, and help educate. That's one thing that Senator Kupek and Representative Joy told me, don't assume that we understand the whole scope of it. Things are happening very fast and continue to reach out to us. So the more Corey and, and staff and us as commissioners can lobby to what the needs are, I think the better. Mr. Chair. Yeah, when, when we um, tuned into that House hearing, you know this the the way this was moving so fast i thought it was pretty much it was i thought it was pretty much a bill that surrounded uh just municipal waste facilities and i didn't i didn't realize the extent of where this was and how it deals i mean it deals far more like commissioner mojo said with how it's going to impact small co-ops xl energy and all these major these are the electrical producers that 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 basically have a source of electricity that goes to the grid uh, and all of those things uh, according to this policy will need to be carbon free by 2040. All of those areas uh, will need to be carbon free and that's and, it, and again I'm going based on this language here an exemption to that would be biomass for solid waste because I think they also know that, or they're, they're figuring out based on maybe some education, that if, they, if we can no longer burn that waste and our, our other alternative is to put it back in our landfills, uh, the methane gas that they produce is significantly worse. And so I, you know, I, you know I, I did hear one comment in there that there's somebody who actually felt that we could go 100% waste free too at some point in time and I thought that was uh, to be honest with you quite a pipe dream but uh, anyway. well anybody else any other comments well, I want to thank Commissioner Campbell and Commissioner Mojo and for staying in contact with our legislators and keeping us up to date on that uh, waste management thing all right I think we'll go into committee reports uh, you got something to report, Dave? Yes, I do. I have a pretty busy week. Okay, on the uh Wednesday or Tuesday the 17th, uh, myself and Commissioner Krabenhoff, uh, County Administrator Larson, met with Rory Buell and Kathy McKay, ongoing discussion looking at uh, forming a community partnership uh, regarding opioid uh, discussions that we've been having. That is an ongoing process. Um, later that day, Myself and, and Commissioner Mojo, along with a number of individuals from the uh, local law enforcement, city, uh, Moorhead City Attorney, probation, courts, um, our county attorney uh, met with, in law enforcement from the Sheriff's Office in Moorhead PD, met with uh, Judge Rosenfeld, uh, discussed the possibility of forming a DWI court. Uh, that also is an ongoing process. Uh, very much going to involve um, setting up a model along the lines of what Ottertail County and some other jurisdictions, Hennepin, are doing in the state um, and uh, seeking grant funding to assist with the 
uh, for, uh, after we've come up with a basically a plan, uh, come up with uh, funding to support su such an endeavor. Uh, again, that's going to be another ongoing project. Uh, Thursday the 19th, virtually attend the Suicide and Substance Prevention Coalition meeting. Uh, Bob Cudzi of uh, Minnesota Department of Health presented uh, information from the Minnesota Student Survey regarding mental health. There's been a decline in student mental health since 2019. Um, it's coincided with uh, what they found to be unusual is a uh, decline in reported substance use and sexual activity. Usually th the thought is that all of these things would, would decline in unison. Uh, there's an increase in anxiety, depression, uh, ACEs, which is adverse childhood experiences, uh, both in the state and Clay County, with a marked uh, higher indication or higher self-reporting coming from uh, the responding uh, students that were female. Um, we also discussed extension one year. Uh, uh, with the state from Minnesota Public Health um, grant that we've got for suicide prevention. $100,000 is still in the fund, and they want another year to spend it. Uh, later that day, I attended the West Central Regional Juvenile uh, Facility meeting, reviewed the 2022 statistics and the budget. Budget won't be improved until March. Uh, approved a food service contract that's uh, the same uh, company that is servicing the jail and they're using the correctional facilities kitchen uh, for the preparation and distribution of food to both facilities. Um, also had, a, had an open discussion uh, regarding some of the overtures from other jurisdictions wanting membership in uh, West Central. Uh, we're going to proceed with caution on that. A lot of these other facilities are realizing that there are no uh, facilities in the state or very few facilities for kids suffering from mental health issues and kids that demonstrate violent behavior. And they see our membership having access to this facility and they want that, but we have to keep in mind it will be uh, where they send their most uh, labor-intensive individuals, and we need to be sure that we keep the facility uh, available to the 10 members that we've already got. Uh, discussed the state of juvenile programs in the state, a lot of that revolving around violence, some of the legislation that's coming through, uh, that doesn't necessarily acknowledge the problems that exist in these facilities and workforce issues. Also, the, the director's response to working with their professional group, the MMJDA, and when state executives and legislators contact him, he want to know what the flow of, uh, what, 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 what he could openly discuss and what he'd need to run through the board uh, we have a lot of faith in Mr. O'Donnell, and uh, we discussed kind of how we'd like the information flow to go on those. And again, later later that day, I attended the Lake Agassiz Regional Library Finance Committee, and we voted and forwarded the budget to the full board, uh, $3.6 million, uh, approved uh, authorized financial um, designated funds and financial institutions. Uh, that all went to the meeting that followed after that, which was a meeting of the full board. We welcomed three new trustees to the board and administered the oath, approved the budget, uh, discussed pending legislation. On Friday the 20th, uh, I attended the intergovernmental retreat, which most of us have, ha have attended. Uh, Derek LaPointe from Downtown Moorhead, Inc. Sherry Larson from Moorhead Business Association presented uh, at that, along with Shannon Full and her staff from the chamber discussing workforce. I really enjoyed Kurt Zeller's presentation on working with state leaders. 
at that point I had to leave uh, to attend my next meeting, but uh, the subsequent, uh, or the remainder of the meeting, I'm sure one of the other commissioners can, can address. Uh, I left there and went to a joint meeting of the Greater For uh, Fargo-Moorhead EDC and the Chamber's Executive Boards. We discussed the future of both organizations uh, and the Fueling Our Future um, initiative in light of recommendations from uh, consultants that we've had working on it for the last year, which is Casey Steinbacher and Ted Abernathy with economic leadership. Effectively, they came up with uh, a list of recommendations that we could choose from. This is going to be an ongoing discussion. There is a, in the initial fueling our future um, proposal, there was a, a deadline for either funding it or, or not, or discontinuing it, which ends at the end of this year. Um, the, there, the sunset of that is in place. And there are a number of things that both organizations are looking at to determine whether this is going to be an ongoing project or not. One of the represent, or a couple of the recommendations uh, simply deal with how the interaction between the chamber and the EDC will be um, on a regular basis and to include uh, a fuel, fueling our future initiative. So all those things are going to be considered and worked on by staff of both uh, both organizations. That completes my report. You were a busy man last week. It was a busy week. <laughs> Paul, you got some? Thank you. Uh, just to uh, piggyback a little bit with uh, a couple of things Steve said, but uh, going back to last Tuesday, the 17th, uh, I, too, was part of that uh, conversation, as he mentioned, for the opioid um, discussion um, and having that um, larger community engagement. Uh, we'll keep following up on that. Another discussion will be coming later uh, today for um, uh, along with the Red River Recovery Group. Um, that afternoon, I um, joined in with the adult mental health um, uh, LAC. Uh, we had uh, a very good uh, discussion of uh, uh, mental high uh, mental crisis responsiveness, and it was uh, it was good to hear how uh, the team out of Fergus Falls that works with it, how our local Warren police work with responses, and um, uh, just good information in that group. Uh, has a lot of uh, um, nonprofits in it and other groups that work toward that uh, mental, mental health. Uh, it was interesting, uh, again, a lot of it moves toward suicide prevention and, and um, you know, the, um, the uh, pressure on uh, older adults um, in that group. So on the... 18th, I uh, went to my first uh, Clay Historical and Cultural Society meeting. Uh, enjoyed that. Um, I'm fairly familiar with it. Uh, um, and uh, just um, knowing my uh, background and my family are uh, lifelong Clay County people and uh, early uh, homesteaders in 1872. So it was fun to be t um, having a discussion about um, the beginnings of uh, Clay County. Also, uh, the main points of their business was uh, approving their 2023 budget. It did pass, and a huge thank you to Clay County for their input of about $208,000, which is about a third of their budget. So uh, we're a big piece of what they do. Uh, they had approved a um, strategic plan in 2022 that goes through 2026. And they're um, just, again, gonna, uh, moving forward what the plan of attack is over the next uh, over the next year toward that plan that they had approved. I'll give further reports on that as that moves on. And then I just want to make mention uh, their newest exhibit, which is supposed to start this week. I think they're, um, uh, they just told me it was the week of the 23rd. And uh, new exhibit in there, uh, photos that 
uh, Mark Peel and Marcus have put together uh, a Moorhead uh, beginning in 1872 and going through 1969 um, before urban renewal took place in, in Moorhead. So uh, I did catch about what they had up at that point, and I would encourage people to stop by and take a peek at what Moorhead looked like over those years. And, and of course, uh, they're very talented people that put those presentations together, and maybe they'll be around to answer questions. Uh, the following day, uh, I was at the um, uh, my first MetroCog meeting uh, in a number of years. Um, uh, uh, Commissioner Mojo was part of that also. Um, and, and again, I'll, I'll just uh, one point, and maybe uh, Commissioner Mojo would elaborate more on these others having more background than I. But uh, they made an amendment to the um, uh, uh, TIP, and I forgot that acronym. acronym. What is it? Can Transportation you? Implementation. Thank you. And anyway, there is a uh, grant in the making uh, coming through the federal uh, government that's going to, uh, toward that plan, going to bring $106,000 to Moorhead. So it's a big deal. Then there was a quick review of the bicycle pedestrian plan, uh, which I hope we all utilize, and it's a wonderful thing to have in Moorhead. Uh, a review of the uh, <clears throat> uh, and of the uh, ITS in, uh, intellectual transportation system plan, and then also uh, uh, a brief review of a. Um, this one maybe you have more depth for us on the uh, RFP toward the Metropolitan Transportation Plan, which takes us out to 2050. And uh, there's a $400,000 budget for that. So you, maybe you want to speak to that. Anyway, that's what I have. So OK. Thank you. Justin, you set to go? Yep. Okay. OK, we're going to go into the bid opening for the removal of the North Broadway Bridge. <clears throat> Obviously, we must have got a few bids in. Thanks, Justin. So this bid opening is for the removal of the North Broadway Bridge. It's a joint project with MnDOT and the city of Fargo. So we did receive one bid. It is complete with a bid bond in the amount of 5%. And I guess first the engineer's estimate is $341,300 and zero cents. And the one bid we did receive is from Redstone Construction LLC. Their bid is $849,941 and zero cents. $849,941 and zero cents. Justin, do you think the timing of removal is challenging? Um, so in talking to SRF did the plans for us, and they thought that winter was the best time to remove a bridge on the red. Okay. Ultimately, we would have liked to open in December, but we were waiting on a permit from North Dakota that we just received last week. So we just got the one bid? One bid, yep. <clears throat> So I guess what I would like to do is I'd like to take this number, review it with both SRF, City of Fargo, and MnDOT before, I guess, offering any sort of recommendation just to see where numbers came in at and if there's anything we can do to try to lower that cost. And I guess if we were to eventually approve it, just make sure that there is bridge bonding available for our share. Yeah, thank you. I, that's, I think that's the correct route to take mm -hmm. here. And I know, uh, I know in light of this, there's, I think there was some discussions amongst uh, the city of Fargo just on, on not, on, not tearing down of the bridge, but how they're going to replace it. But I think it, this might be a good, good time for us to uh, <clears throat> talk about the position that we've had on on the replacement of that bridge and certainly uh, you know we had even commissioned a study amongst our Clay County residents about mm -hmm. would they like to see that and there was overwhelming support that yes they'd like to see a bridge replaced uh, however they uh, you know they they 
they did talk about not at any cost. Right. And, you know, so, um, you know, I, I think the position, and then this maybe goes to help Paul a little bit being new on the board here, is that, that you know, that, that bridge is a joint ownership between the city of Fargo and Clay County. And now that, you know, that goes back to many, many years ago before that area was even within the city boundaries of Moorhead. Mm -hmm. And so we've, uh, we've often said now, now that that's annexed into the city, we should at least be, it still is our county road mm -hmm. and go there, but I, it's important for us to always be keeping the city in the loop on that. But the overriding thing that's important, the message that I think we need to make certain of is that any any type of whatever they is determined to be replaced, and I know the city of Fargo is having that discussion of what they'd like to see. Uh, we are limited on this side to what uh, MnDOT and the state of Minnesota will allow for bridge bonding dollars. And so that you know, if they're if they're talking about some twenty million dollar bridge over there, I I don't know that that's going to uh, meet the. Uh, the criteria from from no, MnDOT. From everything I've gotten from MnDOT, they would support it at the elevation that it was currently at. Okay, and so that's kind of yep. yeah. And and of course, then uh, it would still have to receive the bridge bonding dollars. But that would be the that'll be part of the process in replacing it to Correct. secure those funds. Yep. But I, you know, I think it's important. Is there's some? Uh, it's in the media today, and it was last night. And I think it's important that. Everybody understands that that is a joint bridge project. I know that, um, I think I've heard the mayor say in the past that they are also looking at some federal monies for their for a portion of their share. If that's the case, that's great, but. It is, I, the article I read this morning, and it is in Fargo Stip, I believe they have like 5.4 million for the bridge, but they have quite a bit of approach work on their side because their road is failing. So right. Right. it's not just the bridge work that they have. Well, this is a this is a little bit over the engineer's estimate here. <laughs> a little bit, it's concerning. That's for sure. Mr. I, I would move that we authorize our engineer to take this back to the city of Fargo, uh, MnDOT, and North Dakota DOT too. Or is that not? No, no. need that. Okay, uh, for review and recommendation on how to proceed. I second that. Okay, stand for the discussion on that. We've got a motion by Commissioner Campbell, second by Commissioner Krabinoff to review this thing further. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Thank you. With that, we'll go on to Jenny. Thank you. Last week, I also attended with Commissioner Ebbinger the DWI court implementation conversation. Uh, really want to uh, extend my appreciation to Don Kautzman, who's the coordinator, and, and Judge Rosenfeld for bringing forth uh, really um, documented need for why something like this would really succeed for the residents in Clay County. I um, am hopeful that observing how Otter Tail County and Becker County are implementing the program could possibly be utilized here. We're going to have continued conversation on funding sources and grant proposals and applications and and really working with the courts in the state on how something like this could, could work. Um, currently, uh, COVID really disrupted the courts as we're all aware of that and they're working through those disruptions but think now would be a really good time to implement something of the sort. And as we've seen with our other specialty courts, they really, really um, change people's lives. And so if we can change people's lives in this capacity, it's really certainly worth the conversations. I also had conversations as noted with Representative Joy and Senator Kupek and Brian Martinson regarding the testimony for the House uh, File 7 last week. The Senate uh, will be talking about that bill this week. I know Commissioner, or I thought it was Wednesday. Anyhow, 
the discussions will continue. Uh, Commissioner Krabenoft is headed to New Commissioner School this week, and we talked about connecting with legislators there, as I will be down there uh, presenting at that school as well. Wednesday, I joined the Extension Committee, and uh, Eddie Bernhardson and Jerry Arneson, James Cruz, Josh Chosis, and Randy Nelson from Extension to discuss the nominations for the Farm Awards at uh, University of Minnesota Extension in collaboration with the NDSU Harvest Bowl, um, talking about uh, producers in our county that have gone above and beyond. Uh, we did have several nominations. The conversations will continue, and then awards will be given at the Clay County Fair on Sunday of the Clay County Fair and Farm Fest in August. I attended the State of the Cities uh, meeting last week. The uh, title was Challenges, Opportunities, Growth, Priorities, and Innovation. And in having present um, question and answers and discussion with <clears throat> all five of the Metro mayors uh, was really encouraged about the joint work that is continuing to happen on all fronts with those entities and big shout outs from all of them on the counties in which they work with. So that was exciting. There um, certainly are challenges, but it's through the, the joint collaboration we can work through all of those challenges. So um, they did live stream it and it's available. If you go to the chamber website, you can... Um, observe that. Thursday evening, I also attended the Metrocog committee, committee meeting, as Commissioner Krabenoff alluded to, in working towards the retirement of uh, Cindy Gray, our executive director, this spring. And, and sometime in the next six months, Bob Welton from North Dakota DOT, who's really been a, a pillar of advice for that uh, board. We're um, losing a lot of institutional knowledge, so making sure that um, they're able to share with us as much as possible before they leave. Uh, did talk about the TIP amendments. A lot of um, projects included in that project list, and um, uh, there, uh, one large item in Clay County is the transportation hub that will be um, by over by Walmart. So that's really between Moorhead and Dilworth. That's a, a conversation piece that's been included in those amendments. And then also the implementation of autonomous vehicles and electric charging units and making sure municipalities are taking that into account in their long-term planning on how, what, um, obviously there's a lot of challenges there, but um, making sure that entities are <clears throat> including it as part of the discussion. Uh, I know that I've had this conversation with our county engineer a lot, but it came up again, the future arterial roadway, um, the um, North Dakota, Minnesota crossing that doesn't exist yet. I think it's, is it 80th Avenue on the Minnesota side, south of the convent road. I know that um, once the diversion is done, that will really um, create quite a, a pathway, a natural pathway from North Dakota to Minnesota. So making sure you on the, the uh, highway tracking continue to, to keep that um, on top of mind, I guess. Friday, I attended the Intergovernmental Retreat. Thank you to all of you that are on the Joint Powers Committee. I know a lot of planning goes into that. Um, the City of uh, Moorhead School District was the host this year. I um, always appreciate hearing the updates, uh, particularly the success stories. It was really exciting as someone who's been on the Cass Clay Food Systems Committee before to hear from the superintendent, Shannon Hunstead from the DGF School District to talk about how they're utilizing the local food and growers and producers to implement that in their lunch program. That's really exciting. That's been part of the work of the Cass Clay Food Commission for a long time. <clears throat> Good updates on engaging local businesses and having an innovative, re innovative regional approach to our workforce challenges. <clears throat> As the continued conversations from the State of the Cities and our intergovernmental retreat, there really um, are challenges, as we all know, to those components, but it's through the continued dialogue that we start to formulate a plan on how to um, uh, approach it and deal with it and um, it's exciting to hear different stories from the other entities on how they're doing that. I also at that meeting had the opportunity to 
meet the new city administrator of Barnesville, Jeremy Cassette, who is uh, local and uh, is ready to hit the ground running uh, for Barnesville. So that was exciting. Yesterday, I attended the Lakeland Mental Health Committee meeting in Fergus Falls. We had um, updates. The uh, February annual meeting will be in person or a virtual option if you'd like. I know that Commissioner Gross has attended that in the past. Uh, you're all welcome to be at that. It's the last Monday in February. Uh, we do have a couple new commissioners that will serve in that capacity. Um, uh, uh, both Otter Tail and Pope County will need to name that um, person. They are, we had good access indicators, which as you recall, are the, the days for um, how many, the average days between a call or a referral and what the offering for an appointment is. That's really um, something that's been challenging in the past, but seems to be holding steady in the low uh, two to four days, which is really, really good. There were days that we were months where we had 30 plus days. They are toying with, well, they will be offering a paid internship for their chemical health assessments. Uh, really something that they're trying to do to offset the challenges in workforce, getting full chemical health, um, licensed chemical health providers. Um, Hopefully, if they're able to cut down on what their workload is for the licensed, and it's not something they've done before, but because of the workforce challenges is something that they're wanting to implement. Did give an update, um, uh, piggybacking off the conversation that Commissioner Krabinoff had had at his Mental Health Advisory Committee. Morad Police will be embedding uh, a practitioner for their mental health uh, challenges uh, and offset a little bit of what the um, the uh, mental health um, 24 what is it? mobile mental health crisis unit excuse me uh, used to offer and so they're working on on what the hours and days will be for that but it will be something that they will embed within the department because it's a practitioner level that is a billable uh, um, a billable service. At this point, it's looking like it's going to be something that's boots on the ground, but I did have a conversation with them if that's something they, they would need a space for. I know in the conversations we've had with the Mobile Mental Health Crisis um, Committee and our Sheriff's Office and Moorhead PD, they've talked about how challenging that is, particularly when you're um, outside trying to um, provide services to someone. So I know as we've talked about our detox uh, new building that we do have some programming space and maybe that's something that we can have further conversation on. And um, also discussed the CDs, the investment CDs. Uh, Lakeland Mental Health finished the year with their best margins in four years, which is encouraging. Um, encouraging. They've been able to um, put away some of those dollars into a CDs. As I've reported before, they are in the process of expanding the Moorhead building, and it's um, because of the success of the margins and investments that they will not be, uh, they will be self funding all of it. So um, it's always um, something that I appreciate that uh, they're not coming to us to ask for increases, particularly when this building will be expanding services in Clay County. And then I also attended yesterday the, I think, uh, the last meeting on site. <laughs> Don't jinx it here. Uh, for the uh, Resource Recovery Campus, that trailer will be moving out shortly. Um, a lot of wrap-up things, um, final touches on the facility. After the meeting, we did walk through the facility and and really encourage as many members of the public to attend the ribbon cutting and tours that are happening next Tuesday. That is something that Clay County and really Northwest Minnesota, I think, can be proud of. It's an enormous facility that will help us deal with um, resource tra trash resources for uh, years to come. But I did talk a little bit. There are some contingency dollars that are left, um, but. As we've reported, we had an issue with Excel Energy getting um, 
the meter out there and we were heating by alternative means and so there uh, will likely be a large propane bill that's coming and we're thinking that that will kind of effectively r r wipe out those contingencies. But I believe that concludes my reports. Okay. Evan. Thank you. Thursday the 19th, we had the West Central Regional Juvenile Center meeting. I was able to attend a portion of it. Just a slight correction to what um, Commissioner Ebringer reported in terms of the 2022 budget. Um, that The budget was, when we talk about finalizing that, it basically, you know, it's finalizing the 2022 budget after Lori has an opportunity to make her year-end adjustments. The 2023 budget, of course, has already been approved, and then it's just a matter of going over and finalizing, uh, finalizing that. Um, James gave a report on the food service contract. Um, and I think, other than that, I think uh, Commissioner Ebbinger gave a good report on, on that, and I don't have any more to add on that. That same day, then I went to Lakes Country Service Cooperative in Fergus Falls. Uh, several things were talked about. They, they talked about the, the number of entities that renewed their health insurance through them. And there was a few that left, but overall they had a, a net gain in, in participants in the health insurance program through Lakes Country Service Cooperative. Um, we got some legislative session updates in regards to what's important. And most of it has to do with school district issues as opposed to um, maybe county and city issues. But uh, And then we have the discussion about um, something that's here locally is the YES program in Moorhead. Um, that YES program is is funded um, through Lakes, Lakes Country Service Cooperative. That has really been struggling financially and so there's a lot of discussions going on. And I believe we have a timeline of March at our March meeting. We're gonna uh, try to figure out what, what our solutions are. Um, so there's discussions right now with Moorhead Public Schools and I believe they're gonna be in touch with um, Shannon from DGF as well as others. Um, what could become of that facility? Friday, we had the intergovernmental retreat that's been reported on extensively by everybody. Um, I, I too do like the um, updates that we get from every community. I, that's something that we've done for years and got away from it for a while and, and back to it now. So it's, uh, it was nice to hear of all of the different projects both that were complete and what are in, in the pipeline that can be beneficial to all of us here in Clay County. Uh, I too like the Kurt Zeller's um, deal on um, how to deal with state legislatures. And then yesterday we did ha hold, like Commissioner Moshe said, it looks like it will probably be our final meeting of the construction project for the um, recovery facility. Um, the final inspection is scheduled for February 2nd at 10 a.m. We're hoping then that that gives us our certificate of occupancy so that we can open on February 6th as planned. And um, we did tour the facility. Everything is really looking good. It's a little, quite a bit of cleanup work yet to do, but we, are, we intend to hold our first um, SWAC meeting in that facility Thursday morning of this week. And uh, so our people, our members of SWAC, his Solid Waste Advisory Committee, who have uh, played a large part in the planning of this process over the years, are going to have the first opportunity to, to go in there and see it, which rightfully so, that they should, should have that. So um, we're looking forward to um, having them there on Thursday morning and and then our open house on the 31st and we're, we'll be set to go. That concludes my report.
The last Tuesday after the meeting, I went and uh, the University of Minnesota, Randy Nelson, was putting on an update of crops updates for the farmers in the county. So I attended that. Uh, very interesting. Well, they had Mark Peel there from the Historical Society, who's always very interesting to listen to. And he did put on another good program on the steamboat navigation on the Red River, which was very interesting. Uh, they also talked to them about the weeds update, Palmer uh, Amarath. Um, it's coming, you know, it's, which is in Clay County too now, and they're talking how to take care of that stuff. And had an interesting program for the farmers there, as well attended there. Um, and the other one I had uh, was, um, well, I was at the Intergovernment Retreat too, and I really want to thank the committee that put that on. I mean, you guys did a good job in bringing on some very interesting talented uh, conversations with those people, the presentations that they gave here. It was just, it was just a good meeting there. There again, it's interesting to see what <clears throat> what our communities are doing, you know, really building, there's building going on in almost every community and good success stories there. And I appreciate hearing about that. And also, I mean, Shannon Full and her group, uh, Matt and Kurt, Curtis, they really put on a good program telling them what they're what their program is all about. It's always good to get knowledge on what is the Fargamar Chamber of Commerce um, doing, you know, what are they all about. And they gave a good presentation there and appreciate that. And that's what I have. Mr. Chairman? You, oh, go ahead. Can I, can I just go back to my report for a minute, too, on the, on the uh, West Central Regional Facility when we talked about the, uh, the budget uh, for 2022 budget? Um, James did report that it does look like we are going to come close to meeting what we had anticipated, <coughs> and that is revenues over expenditures for the year 2022 of roughly $1 million, and it's, that's similar to what 2021 was. And, and the beauty of that then is it does allow us to uh, access those funds to keep the bed prices stable um, in so those dollars could be used then as we prepare for 2024. So the 1 million revenues over expenditures from 2021 helped us keep our 2023 numbers down. We're always a year behind on, on that. So, so things, things are looking really good there. And again, it goes to the uh, <coughs> programming of that facility and the excellent work that's done there. And we have people from all over the state uh, wanting to use our facility for that purpose. And, and I think we um, uh, there's there's we should be proud of what we have going on here in that regard. It's, and okay, Steve. I thank Mr. Chair. Uh, last Tuesday, I participated participated in the opioid meeting. That's been covered by Commissioner Eberger and Commissioner Krabenhoff. I would just uh, provide an update. I've tried to uh, keep the board updated with ongoing uh, litigation uh, with the opioid, opioid funding. Uh, we did receive notification that there are five new uh, companies that have settled, uh, Teva, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, and uh, El El or El El Elergon. Uh, and so we had, if you recall, this board back in 2021, uh, were asked to join in as part of the settlements, and then you also were asked to sign a memorandum of agreement uh, to participate that in that. Uh, the Attorney General's office is in the process of uh, capturing all the additional companies uh, that uh, that have settled, uh, and so uh, here in the next uh, few a month or so, we'll probably be back before this board in consideration of of joining on with these five settlements, uh, and then we would have to sign a new uh, memorandum of agreement. We also were notified uh, that the Malincrot settlement uh, has come through. Uh, we're going to be receiving our first settlement uh, dollars probably at the end of this month. Uh, Minnesota's uh, portion of that was much smaller uh, than the original Janssen, and J Janssen, but we're about 10 to $14 million uh, over the next eight to 10 years. Uh, so Clay County's first payment uh, at the end of the month will be right around $14,000. So uh, that's in addition to the other distributors uh, that we received last 2022, about 67,000. Uh, and uh, our first payment this year, our payment for this year, uh, was right around 71,000. So. Um, that's uh, those funding are uh, one that this board has put uh, put about a million dollars of, of those of the funding towards a, our substance use facility, uh, and uh, part of our opioid discussion is also determining how those dollars can best impact our community. 
uh, on the uh, 17th, uh, also had a series of or a conversation with uh, Dan Molly and a series of shared interests between the city of Moorhead uh, and, and the county. On the 18th, we had a Strive for Excellence meeting. Uh, a majority of that discussion was on a spring retreat. I think you've all received an invitation for that. It's going to be on April 20th. Uh, in addition to our department heads, uh, it's also going to be a, an invitation extended to our supervisors, uh, and our focus there is going to be on leadership. Uh, on the 18th, uh, well, we worked, uh, continue to work to finalize the resource recovery ribbon cutting uh, ceremony uh, for the ceremony next Tuesday. Uh, the uh, the uh, I participated that evening. It's been addressed with the testimony for House File 7. Uh, again, I think that I uh, really want to commend the board uh, for their swift actions, uh, both with the letter and also your individual reach outs over that uh, a short period of time to get the, the information uh, that was needed to make the best decision for the county. On the 19th, we had a MCC JPA prep meeting. Uh, we were scheduled to meet uh, this Thursday. Uh, and just of note, that meeting has been shifted due to a quorum issue to Friday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, the, uh, the notifications have gone to the media and also uh, are on our Spotluck and Facebook page. On the 19th, we had a department head evaluation. Uh, and uh, 20th, I participated uh, in the intergovernmental retreat. Uh, I would just note that uh, we are planning to uh, meet with Shannon Full and her staff uh, as, a, as a management group uh, to look at the Ignite program and the platform and how that can, uh, we can better utilize that to recruit uh, employees here at the county. Um, on yesterday, I participated in the resource recovery owners meeting that's been covered. Again, uh, excited that uh, we're getting here at, to the end uh, and uh, thank uh, construction engineers, uh, Burns and Mack, for, for their work. Uh, yesterday afternoon, again, talked with Darren on a human resource matter. Uh, and uh, I think uh, just the next Tuesday, we do not have board, but that doesn't mean we don't have a busy day. Uh, we'll, they're at 1 o'clock that day. The Sheriff's Department is holding an oath of office and award ceremony at 1 o'clock. Uh, and again, our, our, rib, our ceremony for ribbon cutting for the resource recovery facility uh, will be uh, at 2.30 that day. And lastly, I just would uh, make note, uh, back in October of this year, this board sent uh, a letter uh, of support to, uh, on behalf of the Historical and Cultural Society uh, to the Nat, uh, excuse me, for, for consideration of natural registry of historic places uh, for the district number three school district in Roll Log. And we received notification today that, uh, that they were awarded uh, that national recognition. And that concludes my report. Okay. I'm just going to make a comment on the legislative conference on February 21st. I know I registered through that, but uh, since then I've had a surgery coming up. And I don't know what's the, we'll have to find out what the latest point is. Today. I think she sent that out yesterday, didn't she? Okay, because I don't know what my condition will be, so whether I have to cancel out on that or not. Okay. I guess if you can find out for me, I appreciate that. Commissioner Gross, yes. just wanted to clarify, uh, there was a meeting on that Senate file for yesterday, a meeting scheduled, but I was also referring to the one that's on tomorrow. There is another one at 1230, um, so there's two different ones this week. Okay. Anything else? Uh, we're adjourned.